<laughs> if you happen to be a fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy series, you know that music has played a really important role in it. So when Guardians of the Galaxy 2 came out in 2017, there was a really cool collab that was done with Crosley, who's famous for making record players. So while this might look like a suitcase with this cool handle on it, or maybe an oversized lunchbox, it's not. When we flip open this tab here, what you're gonna see inside is an exclusive Guardians of the Galaxy record player and turntable. It has Bluetooth controls and volume control. It's really neat. It's tested, it works. I just sold it for $175. I got it from a local source in the comic industry who I deal with regularly. He sold me two boxes of comic memorabilia for $100, of which I have my money back. So this is all drop it. All right, time out. If you're wondering what the heck is going on here, this is a brand new way I'm going to show you what solds in 2022. I am so done sitting behind a computer and just zooming into images of items that I sold. I thought it would be a lot more fun and engaging for me to physically show you the items and tell you different things about them. You'll ultimately be the judge of that, so let me know down below in the comments which version you like better. You're gonna see me in different outfits throughout the week as I film this in different segments and then string it all together. So with that, on to the next item. All right, so this one is really cool. It's a throw blanket that I just sold for 50 bucks. I picked it up like a dollar at an estate sale. You're often gonna come across these. They are usually folded up and that's why a lot of people pass them because they don't take the time to open them up. But especially when you see these fringed edges, which is a selling point, you know, you definitely wanna investigate. So. When we open this up, you will see that we have three different beer companies advertised on these hot air balloons. We have Coors Light, Coors Original, and Killian's Irish Red. That's cool in and of itself because you have multiple brands combined together. So you got like a triple whammy there. And then up top, you see it says Jamesville Beach Park. Now that's a reference to Jamesville, New York, which is uh, right here in central New York. I live in Syracuse. And so sometimes people will pass that up because they'll think, ah, it's too regional, nah, it's not gonna have a big market. Put the city in the listing. Within less than a week, this sold for 50 bucks to someone who lives in Jamesville, New York. Here's a comic book tip for those of you wondering what titles to look for. The title I'm gonna show you right here, I just sold 11 of them for $75 and I have less than $5 invested into them from combining them together from multiple comic collections that I've purchased over time. And I'm referring to Star Trek New Visions published by IDW. You can see there's the issue number right there. These are all gonna have a heavy card stock on it, so it's going to feel different than your traditional comic book that you're used to. Also inside, it's going to look like this. It's gonna have actual scenes from the original Star Trek and then they put new dialogue on top of it to make new stories. So it's a really cool approach by John Byrne, which is another name that you should look for in comics because he's worth a lot of money. Technically, these are called photo novels. So we've talked a lot on this channel about Mad Magazine and some of the big money sales that you can make by combining these together into vintage lots. But there's another magazine title that you should also look for. It's very similar to Mad that you could do the same thing with. You won't get as much money as Mad, but they still sell well nowadays. That would be Cracked Magazine. Cracked Magazine ran from 1958 to 2007, and it was created directly as a response to Mad Magazine. So they had a lot of TV and movie parodies inside. Instead of Alfred E. Newman on Mad, they had this character here, Sylvester Smythe. Um, just never had the popularity of Mad. Their sales were about a third to an eighth, but I and many other kids, uh, especially in the 1980s, 1970s, collected these and read them and had a lot of fun with them. So today, a lot of people in their 40s and 50s are trying to get them back. Uh, this is a bundle of 23 of them. 
that sold for $50. So try to get them at a low rate in bulk. Um, a lot of these were just scattered in a big box that I bought from someone for 20 bucks. And there was a whole bunch of other magazines, some of which already sold for profit. So this is all just extra stuff right here. And uh, you know it's a nice sale. So be on the lookout for them. And if you wanna learn more about Mad Magazines, Go click the video link up top to learn all about it in a deep dive format. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna show you are five little books which just sold for $65 on eBay after about a week. Now I wanna show you what to look for on these because if you come across them for the first time and you're unfamiliar with it, it's gonna be pretty confusing. What you're gonna see here is what looks like the back of the book, but when you turn it, this is actually how you read it from an American audience's perspective, it's really strange. It takes some getting used to. Now, if you turn it around this way, you're gonna see that the spine is on the opposite direction than you would be used to. And so this is actually the back of the book moving forwards as you turn that way. This is a series called Fate Zero. It's a very popular series. And this one happens to be the English version. So if you open up, you're gonna see all English text. It's actually very hard to come across. That's why it just sold for $65. There is a Japanese version as well. Oh, oh, what's that noise? It's prime time, bonus tip time. So listen, if you ever get these books and sell them, they fit so easily inside this eight by six by four eBay box. It's like it was made for it. It's like a glove, just put them right in there like that. If you bubble wrap them, put a little void fill on top if you need to, seal it up and you're good to go. And thank you very much, Zach, for the purchase. All right, so this is a series that you definitely want to look for. Both of these books just sold for $65. I got them a buck a piece at a bookstore. Now, it's the DC Comics Classics Library series. These are hardcover books. This one here is a Superman one, and this one here is a Justice League one. And basically, they just take old comic books and they put them together into this hardcover book. Now, the thing that I want to tell you that's a tip for this, I told you I got them at a bookstore, is that this one, when I originally got it, it looked like a library book. So it had the plastic on the outside with all the stickers and everything. You could just take that right off. And a lot of those stickers, which look like they might be on the book, actually just come off that top sheet. Then there was one sticker right around here, but sometimes those stickers will peel off really easily. And that's what happened, just peeled off really easily. It does still have a library stamp here and over here, which I disclosed in my listing, but just goes to show you, people will still pay up as long as it's a good series and overall, it's in great shape. All right, this is a really great item here, just sold for $100. I picked it up for eight bucks, you saw it in the recent estate sale video that I did. It's basically a scrapbook that's filled with all sorts of vintage ephemera. I'm just showing you some parts of it here. I showed it in that prior video. These are mostly cards from the 1960s. A lot of them are baby themed, but there's a lot of cool ones in here. Uh, there's Valentine's cards in here. There's Christmas cards uh, in here. You could see some of them right here and those kind of things sell really well you could pull these out and sell them either individually or you could sell them in little lots uh, or you could just try and flip the entire scrapbook if you want to uh, there's all different options that you have so in addition to checking what's on the actual pages of the scrapbook make sure you also look between the inner front cover and the first page same with the inner back cover and the back page because you'll often find lots of other ephemera in there so here we've got a little book we've got additional cards there's articles all sorts of fun stuff to look through uh, this was actually purchased by melissa from the instagram channel uh, tidbits from time so i want to thank her for this her daughter is an ephemera collector and when melissa saw this she couldn't stop thinking about it she knew her daughter would want it so she reached out to me and i offered to uh, sell it to her for a hundred dollars now i could have gotten more for it if i would have taken the time and pieced it out or even if i just tried to flip this by itself but I like to thank people who try to support the channel. So thank you, Melissa, and I hope your daughter enjoys the book and the cards. So this next item is a Pokemon card that sold for $60 today. And I know a lot of people watching this aren't really into Pokemon, 
but a lot of people aren't into it because they don't know what to look for. There's certain key characters to look for. One is the Charizard character. He's easy to figure out because he's an orange dragon. But this is another one you definitely want to look for. His name is Blastoise. Just think of a turtle and he's got a little hydro pump gun on him that you could see there. This is a hologram one too, so he's a bit shiny. You see how he sparkles a bit? That's a key as well. Those two things together equal money. This sold for 60 bucks. I wind up just getting these cards in big lots and big binders that I wind up purchasing. And so there's gonna be some lower value cards in these binders, but then you know you could pick out some of these higher ones as well. Sometimes I'll pay as much as like 50 bucks for a binder, but when you factor in all the different cards that are in there and you, know, you just get some good ones and some you know, lower price ones that you could lot up. Overall, Pokemon so popular, it could be a very profitable area to be into. All right, now one of the things people ask me about a lot is to tell them about a bad buy that I made. And I have a philosophy about bad buys or bad things in general that happen in life is to try to find the silver lining and to try to find a way to turn it into something good. And I'm gonna show you an example of how we did that with a jewelry lot that we purchased. And uh, there's over a hundred of these right here. You could see it's from Apricot Lane. It's this uh, set of earrings. Now, we really like them because we like the colors, the teal and the purple and the gold tone on it. We thought it was really nice and all the cool shapes and stuff on it and the dangles and everything. We liked it. So we thought that they would sell for anywhere between 10 and 15 bucks a piece. And we fluctuated the price on eBay on these for a while. We never sold one on eBay. Now you could see here that the original price was 16 bucks a piece. And here's a whole big giant box of over a hundred of them that we got from a shop Goodwill. Now I did sell one of them and she's probably watching to Lena who bought one during uh, one of our selling events that we had on the channel. So thank you, Lena, and I'm sure they look absolutely marvelous on you. <laughs> we have one more listed in the store. We just hung on to one of them. So we're hoping that both of them will sell for around 15 bucks a piece. And so that will give us our investment back into this, which was $30 for the entire lot. So what we decided to do was just to realize that these just weren't selling for whatever reason and to just sell this lot on eBay. So we sold it today for $65. So, you know, we'll make a profit on it. It's not gonna be what we had originally envisioned it to be. If you have any insights as to why these did not sell for the reason that we thought that they would, uh, we're open to constructive feedback on that. So uh, put your comments down below, any suggestions that you have or any thoughts uh, on that. Well, I busted out my Mountain Dew shirt for this one. Inside of this envelope is my highest eBay sale of all time, $1,750. Now what could possibly be in this envelope that's worth that much money? Well, some of you probably guessed it. Some of you saw it on my social media. It is a comic book, Daredevil number 35 from 1967. As you can see, this book is encapsulated in a plastic slab uh, by CGC. CGC is the most sought after company to grade comic books. People love to display CGC books. They love to display old comic books with popular characters like Daredevil, especially when they're featured prominently on the cover like this in bright colors, when there's action going on. So we've got a battle scene happening too. Now, it would help if this book was a key issue where something really important happened, but that's not the case for this book. It's not a key issue. There's an appearance of Invisible Girl and Trapster, but you know, that's not really considered that important for this book. So what is it that's really driving the price up as high as it is? It's really two factors combined together. Number one, it's signed by Stan Lee. You can see it's nice and prominent on the cover here, that signature coming right over that ray gun blast. That's pretty neat. That's something that Stan would do. People love Stan Lee, he's not alive anymore, so his signature becomes more and more sought after, even though he did sign a lot of things. But we have to think about his signature in specific reference to this book, not about how many other things he signed. It's just this book that matters. 
and he has a tie to this book because you could see here Stan Lee did the story so that's an important connection if you have that connection that helps but beyond all those things all those things help what really helps jump up the price is that this is the single highest graded signed book for this particular issue and the way you know that is you could look it up in the CGC census and it will tell you that so when you have the single highest graded of anything that helps you command the market so you could set the price to whatever you want within reason so I sourced it already graded like that at an online comic book auction two months ago for $800 then turned around and did a pretty quick flip into $1,750. So this is not something that I would suggest people who are brand new into reselling just jumping into uh, because you could wind up losing a lot of money really quickly. It really should be if you're gonna do this in an area that you know really well and you start building up your higher priced investments over time. So you start off like $50 for an investment, $100, and you make sales, and then you use that money to make additional sales. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, I have a whole video dedicated to learning how to make these higher priced exclusive flips. So you could just check the video up top if you wanna learn more. All right, now the last amazing items I wanna tell you about are these awesome pistachio nuts. They're absolutely delicious. Why do I wanna tell you about them? because I bought them from Sylvia Young's eBay store. If that name sounds familiar, Sylvia is a big supporter of the channel and she's also a member of the channel. So one of the things I do for all members is I help to promote their store, not only here, but in my Facebook group, the Reselling Resource Center. So come by over there. It's free to join that. Um, Sylvia's store is incredible. I've gotten lots of stuff from her over the years. I bought a gigantic Tasmanian devil doll from her once as well uh, and some other things. So uh, thank you, Sylvia. Please go and check out Sylvia's store. The link to it is down below in the description section. Uh, it's also going to be in the comments section. And if you buy anything from her, tell her that Primetime uh, sent you her way. So let's take a look at what Daisy's doing and then I'll see you at the next video, everyone. Take care. Hey, Daisy. Where's mommy? Where's mommy? Daisy, where's mommy? Where's mommy? Where'd mommy go? Where's mommy? Where's mommy? Let's go find mommy. Let's go find mommy. Where's mommy? Where'd mommy go? Where is she? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Go find her.